Alrighty. So for anybody who doesn't know, Beetlejuice is the red... I think it's a red super superstar or super giant. I don't fucking know what it is, but it's important. It, I think it's just as big, if not bigger, than our current sun, Sol, which is the star as well. Um, amongst other things, but I really don't know. I know that there is a guy who was a ghost who was named after it. And I believe that it makes up the shoulder in Orion's belt, so... Beetlejuice! A guide to the giant star sparking supernova hopes. When Beetlejuice explodes in a supernova, it'll shine as bright as the full moon in our sky. Beetlejuice is one of the brightest stars in the sky and also one of the largest stars known to astronomers. Forming the left shoulder of the constel okay, it's the left shoulder. Forming the left shoulder of the constellation Orion, Beetlejuice is the so-called red giant, a star in the final stages of its life. Which is sometimes prompts speculation that it might soon explode into a supernova. Which is absolutely still terrifying because I like if we could see it, it's close enough. As far as I'm concerned. If I can see it, it's close enough. If I can see it with my fucking eye, it's close enough. What if it blows up and we see that shit? What do we think? Like, like I'm just saying, if I can see it, it's not good. I know the space is a vacuum, but if I can see it, it's not good. <laughs> Let's see. Forming the located some 650 light years away from Earth, Betelgeuse, also known as Alpha Orionis, usually ranks as the tenth brightest star in the night sky. The star, however, is known for its periodic dimming and brightening up, which sometimes makes it climb a bit up or down in the ranking. Astronomers think that Betelgeuse is only 10 million years old, and that's 50 times younger than our sun. Despite its relatively young age, Betelgeuse has already run out of hydrogen fuel, and its core is now in the final stages, the red giant stage of its life. Fusing helium to carbon. Hopefully there's no iron. The reason for Betelgeuse's fast-paced life is the fact that it was likely born very massive. According to Science Alert, Betelgeuse used to be a blue-white O-type star, the most massive kind of main-sequence hydrogen-burning star. The, biggest, the bigger the star, the brighter it shines and the hotter it burns, but also the faster it runs out of its hydrogen and the sooner it turns into a red giant. Apply those metaphors. To your favorite peeps and then look at it be like as above so below that's why we call them burnouts mm -hmm. let's see the bigger the star the brighter it shines the hotter it burns but also the faster it runs out of its hydrogen and the sooner it turns into a red giant in its prime Betelgeuse must have been tens of times more massive than our own sun, which is a star, and tens to hundreds of times more luminous. Temperatures on the surface may have reached up to a mind-boggling 89,500 degrees Fahrenheit, 50,000 degrees Celsius compared to the sun's lukewarm 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, 5,500 degrees Celsius. Ah, too much. Ah, too little. There we go. That's perfect. After Betelgeuse exhausted its hydrogen and began burning helium, it, it, it envel its envelope expanded far beyond its original size. Today, Betelgeuse is one of the largest known stars, measuring more than 700 miles, 1.2 billion kilometers in diameter. If Betelgeuse were to replace the sun at the center of our solar system, it would reach all the way to Jupiter. God damn, that's right. They probably cook our fucking plants. Jesus fucking Christ. Who needs who needs the light on that bright where it reaches all the way to Jupiter? Like, think about it. Jupiter's all the way out here. It's, it, I, like, I think Jupiter's the, far, the, the farthest planet of the inner sanctum. Like, I think Saturn is closer than Jupiter is. So that's saying a fucking lot. And Saturn don't like nobody. Saturn literally got rings of ice and, and, and like, mean-ass diamonds to be like, don't come fucking near me. This is my bubble. You will stay more than six feet. Like, you know, that's that's Saturn. It, it, like, it always extra. Just being like, I don't trust none of y'all. Don't come in my goddamn yard. Honestly, as a Capricorn, I would make rings of ice and shit to tear people's flesh up if they got too close to me, not gonna lie. That just sounds like the life. That sounds like the life. 
that's a whole vibe. Anyway, going back to this. After Beetlejuice exhausted its hydrogen and began burning helium, its envelope expanded far beyond its original size. Today, Betelgeuse is one of the largest known stars, measuring at more than 700 million miles, 1.2 billion kilometers in diameter. If Betelgeuse were to play... Oh, chaos. Read all that already. On the other hand, the star is no longer anywhere near as hot as it used to be. At 5,800 degrees Fahrenheit, or 3,300 degrees Celsius, Betelgeuse's surface is now cooler than that of our sun. Still, the star shines 7,500 to 14,000 times brighter than our star star according to NASA it gives you specs it gives you specs like look at how like in regards to like shit or whatever right look at how much closer our sun is to this thing but this would illuminate all the way to Jupiter And Saturn is like the first of the outer planets, and that just trips me up because it's just like that. Like Jupiter is one of the planets that don't get really touched by the sun. Like there's a, like there's a, yeah there's a reflection there's a gloss. Sure, but still this is like the light of Jupiter. Like it's the fucking Earth. Holy fuck. Hmm. Let's see. Due to its enormous size and relative proximity to the Earth, Betelgeuse is one of the very few stars that can be studied in greater detail by telescopes on Earth and in its orbit. Morgan McLeod, that's not like a full ass character name, but okay, a postdoc with no comma, a postdoctoral fellow in theoretical astrophysics at Harvard University who studied the star, told space.com. Most stars, other than our sun, cannot be studied in any detail at all, McLeod said. We see them only as point sources of light, but Betelgeuse is big enough that we can resolve it with the Hubble Space Telescope and with radio telescopes. Those images reveal a striking body quite unlike our sun. Rather than a single smooth sphere of super hot plasma, Betelgeuse is a lumpy clump of boiling gas bubbles. Some of them as large as a small star. Huge plumes of hot material rise from Betelgeuse's core to its surface and cools down and disappears back inside the interior. It's like the sun cycle on a very high dose of steroids. That is so weird. So it's just... Self need it's self mixing. You know how like cats look when they're. Is that what it's? Is that what Beetlejuice is doing? It's just mixing itself. It's a star that's self mixing. Wow! I wasn't expecting. <laughs> I, I, I like I, I I wasn't expecting that. So what the fuck is it? what the fuck? Space is the weirdest thing. Like, you know, you think that this planet is weird when you start exploring more of it. No, you gotta look at space shit. Because it, it literally will tell you there's stuff out there we don't comprehend or understand. And there's literally a star melting back into itself. Because it, 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 like, like it's fucking dough or some like cornstarch um, gravy mix or something. And it's just we it, like It's weird. It sparks the imagination. Which I think is a lot more vital than anything else. It's just like, what the fuck is this shit? Uh, those, uh, like, it's like the sun cycle and very, like, I don't know how to deal with that. It's like, oh, it's own molten thing, but it just, hmm. This is a 19, uh, no, two, 19, mm -hmm. I almost said 1990 something. 2019 Beetlejuice suddenly dimmed in a way never seen before. No doubt. Hmm. Beetlejuice is great dimming. In recent years, Beetlejuice has been making headlines as its behavior has become somewhat erratic. Well, what do you expect? It's, it's, it's kind of got issues. I, like, I feel like, you know, like the Caretaker album should be being played for Beetlejuice. Because it kind of makes sense. Uh... For centuries, astronomers have observed Betelgeuse's brightness to wax and wane on a regular 400-day cycle, rising to the magnitude of 0.3, then dimming to about 0.8. Magnitude is a measure of the star's brightness, by the way. That is, 
logarithmic and inversely proportional to the actual observed brightness. So the lower the number, the brighter the objects. For example, at its brightness, at its brightest, my apologies, the planet Venus shines with a magnitude of negative 4.6. But in the summer of 2019, the star has suddenly gone 2.5 times fainter than what has ever been seen before. The cause of that event, since dubbed the Great Dimming, was later traced to an enormous expulsion of material from the star's interior that created a huge dust cloud that subsequently obscured our view of the star. Although the dust cloud has since dissipated and Betelgeuse has regained its usual brightness, the star has not quite been this, its old self since. Its 400-day brightness oscillation period has halved to 200 days, and on top of that, in the spring of 2023, the star began to brighten beyond its usual peak luminosity. With modern tech, let's see, with modern tech telescopes, I'm like not talking. If I could fucking talk today, you ever just sat there talking? You just get on your own goddamn fucking nerves. I'm at that point. I'm so annoyed with my. Fucking I'm just like, what are you fucking talking stupid? Like, you know, I'm just getting on my own goddamn nerves. This poor cat, he's trying to sleep. I'm not helping. Which is fine, because I pay the rent. You pay in cuteness, though, so I guess I can't. I, I, I guess I can't complain. Your job is a lot more important than mine, sir. Uh, astronomer, astronomers, several supernova explosions. What? With modern telescopes, astronomers several supernova explosions every night. They see them? Shit. <coughs> 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 like they observe them? Like what is it? Most of them, however, are too far away. The Beetlejuice supernova will be different. I wish I would say that in better English because I'm not sure if they mean observe, watch, um, determine, report, like observe, like and, and all, like all those words are similar, but they but they all have like very strong different meanings. Beetlejuice antics with the supernova prompted speculations that the star might soon explode in a supernova. Supernova explosions are the swan song of every massive star. After they consume all of the helium in their core, red giants begin to burn carbon and oxygen into neon and, and magnesium. But burn those into silicon. Eventually, the star's core fill with iron, and that's when the fireworks begin. Adding helium nuclei to an iron atom actually extracts energy rather than gives off energy, says McLeod, or it absorbs it. So all of a sudden, rather than a reaction which is releasing tremendous amounts of energy, the center of the star starts to absorb energy, and that's when change happens. The center of the star collapses on itself kind of from the inside out, and then it leads to what we call the core collapse supernova. Supernova explosions are also so bright that they briefly outshine the entire galaxies. With current sensitive telescopes, astronomers can spot supernovas in the farthermost reaches of the universe. Multiple such explosions can be detected within a single night, but most of them are so far away that we mere mortals can't notice. A Betelgeuse supernova would be different. Due to the star's proximity, the explosion would be so bright that it would be visible even in the daytime. Fuck that sun. When it happens, the star will become as bright as the full moon, except that it will be concentrated in a single point. Miguel Montagre Montagre is it Montagy? I don't know if I'm saying the name right with that Miguel part. Yeah, I don't know if it's Spanish or, English, or French. I'll go with Miguel. A postdoctoral fellow at the Laboratory of Space Studies and Instrumentation in Astrophysics at the Paris Observ Observatory and Betelgeuse expert told Space Science. For maybe two months, it'll be so bright that if you shut down all the lights in a city and have no clouds, you'll be able to read a book in the light of the supernova. How likely is Beetlejuice to go supernova in our lifetime? With the promise of such a speculation, it is no surprise that Skywashers wish for Beetlejuice to die, which that's nice. Ew, fuck those people, Beetlejuice. Like, you shine any way you want to. When you're ready, you're ready. 
They just want something to talk about. I fucking hate your motherfuckers. The last time a massive star went supernova in our galaxy, the Milky Way was in an area of the famous astronomer Johan Kepler. This the SN nine or the SN sixteen zero four supernova, also known as the Kepler supernova, shone brightly in the day sky for three weeks, according to historical records. But most astronomers who study Betelgeuse tempered the expectations. According to the most accepted models, the star is only in the early stages of its red giant life, happily fusing helium and still tens of thousands of years away from going boom. From our time or its time? Because it ain't already done it. We just ain't seen it yet because it hasn't made it that far yet. Because it's the wrong time. Like, you know, and, like, and once you really pay attention to it in space, when you look at time, you start realizing, huh? I feel like no one explains shit to be correct. You know, once you realize how Ty works off of a fucking planet and in this, like, kind of area, which you really don't, and it's really kind of shocking when you realize just because you see something here does not mean that something else is going to see it over there. Just because you both are present at what you perceive as that right time does not mean that that is present for that thing at the time. Like, this is why it's important to understand that, like, you could see your own ass, but you ahead of you aren't going to see your ass. Until you get to the point of that time. You haven't reached that time yet. But when you reach that time, you're going to see yourself. And then you're going to realize what the fuck was actually happening. Which is similar to what happened in Cube 2. Or Cube Squared. I'm not sure what it was called. But yeah, it was it was one of those things where it's just like, who's that person in the window? Oh my god, that was me in the window and I was seeing what the fuck was happening. Holy shit. Like, you know, just weird shit like that. But once you get to that point, it, it kind of makes sense, too. Uh, da, 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 da. The helium burning phase is several hundred thousands of years long. Montegrish said, or whatever his name is. Sorry, man, I don't mean to butcher your name. Then you have the next phase that lasts, like, 10,000 years, and then thousands of years, and then it's a century. And finally, one is only some days and hours just before explosion. While Betelgeuse is close enough for astronomers to study the chemical composition of its atmosphere, no existing instrument can peer inside the star's core to see whether it's really fusing helium or had moved on to fusing carbon and oxygen already. Most of the assumptions about Betelgeuse's state are therefore based on observations of other red giant stars, Dude said. For example, another Milky Way red giant known as VYCMA located 3,900 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Canis is thought to be much closer to the moment of its death than Betelgeuse. But unlike the bright Betelgeuse, that star has been constant, consistently dimming over the past 100 years. A young years ago, the YCA, I want to take you to... That, that, yeah, actually, it's like YMCA, almost. Or Vyakmi. Vacmia, or whatever, I don't know, it's like, what is it called? Vaxima. Vaxima, that works. Used to be visible to the naked eye, he said Montague, but it has been expelled so much material, but it has expelled so much material that we can now only see it in an infrared. This expelling of material is what we expect to see when the star nears the supernova explosion. It's already moved about 60% of its original mass, while Betelgeuse still has 95% of its ma original material, its initial material. See, that's kind of weird right there. It's just like, why is it that awkward? But it isn't... Huh, that actually made me sit there and be like, well, I don't know what all this is, but I know that that just sounds wrong. The astronomer added that according to historical records, Betelgeuse used to be described as a yellow star up until 2,000 years ago when poets began describing it as red. That Montagrish things might indicate that Betelgeuse is only in its early stages of its life as a red planet. How to observe Betelgeuse? The 10th brightest star in the sky, Betelgeuse is... Get out of my ass. I... 
I had that up in my bed, and I, like it's just been up in my ass all day. If the tenth brightest sky and star Betelgeuse is easy to find and easy to observe, even from most like polluted cities, it, uh, no shit. The Orion constellation graces the night sky in the winter months on both the northern and southern hemispheres. The constellation's most distinct feature is the belt formed of the three stars. Above them sits a triangle of what is supposed to be Orion's head and shoulders. The reddest star on the left is Betelgeuse, the constellation's second brightest star. Then we have frequently asked questions. Why is Betelgeuse so interesting for astronomers? It's an amazing star. It's one of Orion's shoulders, so when we look up at the constellation Orion, it's right there in front of us. Most stars, other than the sun, we don't get to actually see in any detail. We just see them at points of sources. But Betelgeuse is big enough in our sky that we can resolve it with the Hubble Space Telescope and with radio telescopes. And what we see in those images is that the star is lumpy. It's not a perfect sphere. It's this lumpy boiling thing. And the size of those lumps is similar to the size of a star. We see that there is powerful convection going on inside of Betelgeuse. The entire star is essentially boiling in an extreme way. We see convection in our sun, but the sun's convective cells are really small compared to the sun's size. With Betelgeuse, this boiling is on a completely different scale. You think it's going to go supernova anytime soon? Our best models indicate that Betelgeuse is still relatively a long time from eventually exploding, so we're talking about the tens of thousands or maybe a hundred then. Hundred thousands years, if those models are correct. In other new, in other stars that went on to explode in supernovas, we have seen similar phases that we see in Betelgeuse. There were outbursts of brightening and dimming, which suggests that this incredibly strong and violent convection that we're seeing in Betelgeuse as part of a lead up to a supernova explosion in some red giant superstars. But we also think that it may be going on for quite some time before the star gets to that explosion. And one of the questions that astronomers would love to know the answer to is whether they are any telltale signs that a star is one year away from exploding to a supernova, a decade, or a thousand years. And right now, we just don't know. But that's part of why we're studying Betelgeuse in so much detail and doing all this coke to keep ourselves up so we don't lose the data. <laughs> Because we think that there is an example of all sorts of stars that it does go through that evolutionary path. And this is the closest example of such a star. And so we have this chance to resolve the structure on the night sky and study it in incredible detail with or without the cocaine. I made that part up, but it woke you the fuck up, didn't it? Just like cocaine. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> what do we know about Betelgeuse's great dimming? Oh my god, that just fucked my throat up. Hmm? I did turn his back on, right? Okay, I almost lost my shit being like, I know I didn't talk all this effort and read all this shit just to stop because I wanted to get coffee and pee, but whatever. The dimming, what do we know about the dimming of Betelgeuse? The dimming in 2019 was most significant in the more hundred years that the astronomers have been keeping track of Betelgeuse's brightness. The star became dimmer for a period of a few months and then it brightened again to close to its normal levels. But after that, we noticed that the star's unusual pulsating period changed from 400 days to 200 days. We wanted to understand the connection between those two events, so we studied that process with a computer simulation. And we found that most likely inside Betelgeuse's boiling interior are probably two really big blobs of fluid ran into each other in one particular dramatic way that happens only once in perhaps a century and that collision sent a huge amount of material to the surface and drove shock waves ahead of it and when that blop of material reached the surface some of the material burst from burst it out from the surface but at the same time the interior began to fall back in so essentially the outside and the inside of the star got out of sync with each other and we think this has caused a great change what <laughs> so you're telling me so it's basically like the planet had to sneeze and burp at the same fucking time and that just fucked it up I'm <laughs> Oh, like, you know, that feeling that, like, when you, when it feels like you're going to die because you sneezed and, 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 like, burped at the same time. Or you sneezed and fart, but, like, this is more intense because when you got to burp and then you got to sneeze, it's like. Am I going to be able to breathe again? I feel like I'm going to shoot my lungs inside out. So that's what it, it, that's what it sounds like to me in my head. It's like, oh, poor thing. 
So I think he just fucked it. I, I, he was just like, oh, I'm too old. I didn't know. Oh, where does back knee come from? All in my 30s. That's basically what's happening to Beetlejuice. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. What do you expect to happen with Beetlejuice in the coming years? We think that it will return to its regular form to your cycle of dimming and brightening within the next five to ten years. That's the study on why it is up with Beetlejuice. Because I was just really curious about it. Because I know that there are different ones. But I want to look at the other ones as well. Um, very good to pay attention to what goes on with the actual stars. Instead of talking about them. Because it's just like. They're literally right here. But yeah. This is fun. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. I'll talk to you later. Bye.